Hotsy so hello, I'm Maya Grace in case you don't know, and today we're gonna get whimsically organized. I've gone and released another free printable PDF sewing pattern. And because so many people loved my standard utilitarian ditty bag that I made specifically with theaters in mind, I thought I might make a little snazzy one. And this one is just for corsets and lingerie. I mean, realistically you could put anything in it, but it's designed with corsets and lingerie in mind. I actually got the idea when I saw this one in an antique store and look at how pretty it is. But let's talk about the lingerie bag. It can fit two corsets per pocket. I can fit two of my corsets in one pocket, but you might be able to fit three or maybe just one depending on the size of your corset and how thick the materials are and how many bones it has, how tight it can roll. There's a lot of factors going on there. The welt pockets that kind of mimic the look of collarbones are really great for sorting matching lingerie, such as if you had a bralette or a panty that matched a corset and you wanted to keep it near the corset. But you could also put stockings in there or maybe even shapewear if you're one of the people that wears like the spandex shorts or like the skims things that shrink up really small. These bust pockets are fantastic for your daily waspies that roll up really small or for your Regency stays. I particularly enjoy putting my padded bras in here because then I can find them, specifically the ones I like to wear as shirts because it's always kind of difficult for me of like, do I put this in the lingerie drawer where it's gonna get lost or do I put this like hanging in my closet? And this is a really good alternative so it doesn't just disappear in the drawer where I forget about it, but it's not necessarily taking up a full hanger all by itself. This is a great gift to make for the lingerie lover in your life, or even just give it as a gift to yourself to help with the chaos in your lingerie drawer if it looks anything like mine. And as a little add-on to this pattern, I've also included a little goodie bag that can hang on a hanger. It's just a little hanger pocket where you can put the matching waist ties or hair bows to a particular dress, or if you're like me and you have a lot of shirts or skirts that have matching wristbands and leggings or anything like that, you can put them all on the same hanger without anything getting lost. Because I am notorious for losing the matching items that go with my garment because I didn't have a system for it. And this is a pretty good system. And while this little goodie bag is great for your personal wardrobe, it's also really useful if you are a theater because if you have a quick change that needs to go on one hanger and be transported from the dressing room to one side of the stage, this little pocket is great to stuff all of those wily little silk scarves and handkerchiefs in so that they don't get lost and skitter around backstage straight into the void, never to be seen again. You can tell I was traumatized by my time working as a costumer. But let's talk about fabric requirements for this bad boy. For the main ditty bag, like bodice part, you're going to want a pretty colored upholstery fabric. I'm using this pretty green here. You might have like some red velvet laying around or something to that effect. A corduroy would also be really cool. But the main point is that you're gonna want a very heavy duty upholstery fabric, like a velvet or a brocade. This would be a great project for or some upcycled couch fabric. You may want to use a thin lining fabric for the inside of the welt pocket just to create less bulk in that top section there so you can physically fit more items in the pocket. Upcycling an old button up top or maybe a curtain would be great for these lining fabric pieces. Also, you probably only want to put the welt pockets on one side of your ditty bag to prevent bulk for the little goodie bag, any type of fabric works just fine, just so long as you like the way that it looks from the right and wrong side, because the way that this is sewn, both are going to be showing. You could flatline your fabric with a thinner fabric that you liked the look of so that the backside wasn't showing, but that step is kind of unnecessary. And because this is mostly just going to be hanging in your closet, I personally didn't see much of a reason to spend that much time on it. But that's enough talking about it. Let's get in there and sew it. For pattern piece number one, you'll be cutting out four separate pieces. Two are going to be shorter, and you get those by cutting along the line I pointed out a moment ago. And two are going to be the full length of the bodice. You're also going to want to mark this vertical line because that is where you're going to attach your long pockets later. For pattern piece number two, you're going to cut out two of the same piece and you don't have to worry about marking it. I'll show you what I do for that later. Now for pattern piece number three, you're gonna mark that same vertical line that is also present on pattern piece number one, and you're gonna want to mark the box pleats along the bottom edge. These box pleats are what's going to give shape to your pockets and allow more than one corset to fit inside. 
I'm folding my paper on the line and just going ahead and tracing with my chalk to get a really precise line, but you can use whatever marking method you prefer. I'm gonna show you really quickly exactly how I pleat these as well. What you do is you pull the innermost line to the outermost line and you make sure that that middle line is folded. And repeat for both sides of your box pleat. Now for pattern piece number four, you might consider cutting this out of a lightweight fabric. Either way, you're going to want two of them. You could hypothetically do four, but that might be a little bit too bulky. What you see me doing now is cutting out the guide for the welt pocket, and I'm going to go ahead and mark that really exactly with a Frixon pen. You can also do this with chalk, but I prefer the Frixon pen because it is so much more accurate. Now remember how I said you didn't have to mark pattern piece number two? I like doing this by using my pens to mark the corners of my welt pocket, just like you see me doing here. I stick it through the paper first, and then I remove my pin. I place it through just the fabric. This way I can see exactly where my welt pocket is supposed to line up. And as you can see, I trace my welt pocket perfectly on the lining fabric portion, just so that I can follow that whenever I'm stitching, and it makes it really convenient and easy, and I don't have to trace it out twice. Remember how we cut out four of our bodice piece? Well, you're going to take each of the smaller pieces that you cut on the fold and put those right sides together with your long bodice piece. Round this top edge to finish it nice and cleanly. And eventually this is going to become your bodice pocket as I've been calling it. Machine work, you might want to mark your stitch lines exactly so that you can go slowly and make sure that your needle is falling on the stitch line perfectly every time. However, if you do machine work regularly, you'll know how to line things up to be exactly 5 eighths of an inch away from the edge and just be able to follow the curve. Both of these are totally valid. Just go slowly and make sure that all of your curves are regular and even and you're not putting in any awkward corners by putting your needle down and turning your work, except for of course in the center point. Next, you're going to clip your seam allowance. What you see me doing here is cutting out little triangles. You don't actually need to do that because this is a convex curve. So you just need to clip little slits in it so that it doesn't hold itself together funky whenever you're turning it right sides out. I like to use a spritz bottle to get the seam line as wet as possible. And I also like to use a pin to grab a couple fibers from right, right, right up next to my stitching line and roll it out towards myself. I find that I can get much more of the fabric out this way. It also helps to wet it and rub the inside with a blunt edge, such as the smooth rounded tip of a bodkin or maybe a nice rounded spoon, whatever you have available. It's also very important to press your fabric and let it completely cool before you handle it again. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to sew all the way around the stitch lines for the welt pocket. Be sure to put your needle in the down position and rotate your work with the foot up to get a very crisp corner. After locking in your stitches with a back stitch on top of where you started, take some sharp scissors and put a line down the center and then very carefully cut a snip to the corner of each line of stitching, being very careful not to cut any threads. Wrench your fabric and turn your welt pockets right sides out. Once you've got all your fabric exactly laid how you want it, you're going to press your fabric. Literally, you can just press your iron on top of it until the steam starts to slow down a little bit, lift your iron and let your fabric cool in the position that you want your welt pocket to lay. I'm personally trying to break the habit of ironing things by rubbing my iron back and forth and sliding it against my fabric. Take your welt pocket and fold it up so that the corners meet pin your fabric in place. The better you pin it, the less you're gonna have to manhandle it when it is on your sewing machine arm. And then you're just going to stitch this with a straight stitch. You can also use an overlocker if you wish, or you can do a straight stitch and then a zigzag to prevent your fabric from fraying in the future. One thing that is very important as you're sewing this is that you are checking the underside of your fabric and making sure that there is not extra fabric underneath where you are about to sew so that you don't sew your welt pocket to the front of your ditty bag and then have to unpick the stitches because that would be tragic. Now let's finish the top hanging portion of our ditty bag. You're gonna fold the raw edge of the very top where the hanger is going to go through under by about a half an inch. Then you're going to go over this with a zigzag stitch to finish the raw edges and give it a nice clean finish 
I personally like this method because it is fast and not very bulky. Now pin your hanging pieces right sides together. You're going to sew this with a straight stitch and of course 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. However, you might want to check with your hanger that you plan on using that it is going to fit with a 5 eighths seam allowance because if it's a little bit bigger, you might want to skimp on your seam allowance a little bit. Or if it's a smaller hanger, you might want to make it a little bit tighter. You can check this on the paper pattern piece before you cut your fabric out. I did check these angles with multiple hangers when I did my first iteration of the ditty bag pattern, but better safe than sorry. Now let's go back to working on our bodice piece. Along the bottom edge, we're going to do a wide zigzag to finish that raw edge and prevent fraying. Then we're going to fold it under once and treat this like a hem. Again, this is to prevent bulk and because it's fast and easy. At this same time, you're going to want to fold and hem the top edge of the ditty bag pocket as well. Both of these pieces can be flatlined with the utility fabric. But let's work on our main pocket now. So the bottom edge of the pocket that connects to the ditty bag is pleated. So what we're going to do is make sure that our pleats are fully marked and I even have mine pinned in place already before pinning it to the bottom edge of my pocket. Now I have the bottom edge of my pocket pinned against the bottom edge of my ditty bag bodice. And the rest of the ditty bag bodice is rolled up in a burrito roll so that it'll fit through the machine easier because I have the bottom ends of these two right sides together, but this pocket is going to fold upwards. So what I'm doing right now is a zigzag to attach it because this is a little bit stronger than a straight stitch. And whenever I fold my pocket piece upwards, it's going to be right sides facing out. Once that bottom seam is sewn into place, what you're going to do is lie your ditty bag pocket flat against the ditty bag bodice. So what you're going to do now is start at the top edge of the ditty bag pocket and stay stitched down the side. I would do this less than 5 eighths of an inch from the edge just so that whenever you do your final seams, your stay stitching is buried and you don't have to worry about going back and unpicking it. When you get to the end of your stitch line, what you're going to do is back stitch and then trim your thread. And now we are going to define the pockets on our ditty bag. We are going to stitch in between these two box pleats to define both of our pockets, starting with a back stitch, continuing straight up towards the hem. And then we are going to lock our stitching with another back stitch. If you wish, you can mark this straight line with your preferred sewing method, but I find it easy enough to just sew a straight line in between two pens, but I'm very confident with my machine abilities. You will do this four times in order to create six pockets on both of your ditty bag bodices. You will then pin the side seams of your ditty bag bodices by placing them right sides together and making sure that your box pleated fabric is not in the way of your stitch line. This seam is done with a straight stitch and a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. When sewing your side seams, you are going to stop whenever you get to the portion of the bodice that you already finished with a facing. When you get here, just back stitch and remove your work from the sewing machine. Now we are going to place our hanger inside of our hanging bag. This hanger is going to wind up trapped forever, but that's okay. This next part is a little bit tricky. What you're going to do is line up your ditty bag bodice on top of the hanger bag, and you are going to stitch that together. This is going to give you four defined breast pockets, if you will. And for your side seams that you've already finished in, if they stick out too far, you might want to curl them under whenever you do your top stitching. This is all a matter of taste and you should fiddle with it until you think it looks nice. Now you are going to do a straight stitch all along the perimeter of your bag. I like to do this by starting in one corner, going down to the bottom of my bag where I want to attach it and define the bottom of the pocket. I'm going to stitch to the midpoint, pivot my work to stitch up towards the cleavage of my bag, so to speak, and then I will continue until I get to the final edge of my bag and sew that closed. This part of sewing the bag you might want to do by hand. This was by far the most frustrating part to put through my machine, and if I didn't have the skills under my belt that I do, I think I would have preferred to do this by hand with a back stitch. It's a little bit cumbersome and awkward, and depending on the size of your machine arm, it might not fit. I was using a somewhat standard sewing machine. It's a plastic model from the 2000s, and it fit just fine, but it was a little bit cumbersome at parts. I did have to stop in the middle and like restart my sewing line. I couldn't do it as one fluid line of stitching, which was a little bit frustrating, 
but like I said, this would be just as fine done by hand. And now you have a finished ditty bag. Like I said before in the intro, this thing can hold so many corsets and I am very happy with the way that it turned out. But now let's move on and construct a little goodie bag. To start with, we are going to make a little hem on the bottom edge of our fabric, the side that is completely flat. This hem should be constructed so that the right side of the fabric is folded towards the wrong side of the fabric, like you see me doing here. The next thing that we're going to do is hem the top edge of the fabric, and we are going to hem it facing the opposite direction as we did that bottom hem. This hem we're going to do so that the wrong side of the fabric is hemmed in the pretty way, and so that the folded portion is on the right side of the fabric. Matching this hem with a zigzag stitch as opposed to a straight stitch, and we've only got it folded over once to prevent bulk. So eventually this pattern piece is going to fold like this but in order to sew that side seam, we are going to turn it right sides out and sew it like this so that the wrong sides are out. You'll repeat all of these steps on your second piece of your Diddy goodie bag. You'll see in a moment, each little goodie bag is made out of two of these little pocket pieces. So you'll have two pockets hanging on your little hanger in the end. It is possible to do this with just one pocket. What you'll do is you will cut your pattern piece the way that you have seen me doodle here and that will give you one pocket that'll hang and one little piece that will keep your pocket attached to your hanger. Finish your raw edge by either serging it, zigzag stitching it, or simply cutting it with pinking shears, whatever you prefer. Then turn your bag right sides out and place it right sides together with the other pattern piece. What you're going to do now is sew the top seams together. It's just a 5 eighths of an inch seam being sure to backstitch at the beginning and end, and leaving that gap in the middle where we made a hem already. All that's left to do now is find a nice hanger to plop your pocket onto, and some bows to stick inside of it. Thank you so much for following along, and I hope that you love your new ditty bag. I love making organizational tools and that rush I feel after I get something put together and pretty. It's usually one corner of the house at a time. And I know the shelf where I was keeping my corsets was starting to get just completely out of hand. I'm lazy. I just want to burrito roll my corset, stick it in somewhere and not think about it again. Anyway, I hope that this was helpful for you. In the description box below is where you will find the link to this sewing pattern, as well as the rest of my free PDF sewing patterns that are always hosted on my Kofi, such as the Cloud Queen bloomers, the headdress pattern, the bow pack that I just released, and I have a very special pattern that is coming up soon. I also might have physical copies on the way for y'all to purchase, but we'll see what happens. This channel and all of my free PDF sewing patterns are only made possible by viewers like you. Hello, Oliver. I'm dog sitting for my roommate's sister's coyote and he is very clingy. And speaking of viewers like you, if you've followed one of my tutorials or you've just made something that you're really proud of, there is a Google form linked in the description. Oh, goodbye. There's a Google form linked in the description box below where you can show me what you've made or what someone else has made for a chance to be featured on Keep Sewing On, the show that I do where I feature creations made by viewers like you or just people who deserve recognition for the cool stuff that they're doing. If you liked this video, be sure to give it a like so that more awesome people like you can see it. And I'll see you in the next one, folks. Bye, friends! Because they're a little bit depressed and squishy. But who among us is not depressed and squishy, honestly? That's probably too loud. You're not stealing my seat this time. I just got the best deja vu.